Hello. <laughs> I always hate doing my intros. <laughs> Welcome back, it is your girl K Ray, and we are here today with another episode of Jaw the Cup K Ray. Hi, everyone, thank you so much for being here and watching me uh, talk to all these incredible people because um, that is the fabulous life I live. Anyways, but we can't do this without our sponsors, so here we go. This episode is brought to you by Dilmil, your leading South Asian dating app. With over 10 million matches made, download the Dilmil app now to find your perfect partner. We would like to thank our sponsors, Spacebar Co-working Space. For you, if you're interested in having a space where there's other creatives, other entrepreneurs, be sure to check them out on their website, space-bar.ca. We would like to give a huge shout out to our decor sponsor with all these fancy crystals and, you know, the rugs and and the pillows and everything that's happening in this beautiful set. Please check them out at the Eastern Bazaar. With every purchase, you plant a tree, saving the environment one tree at a time. And uh, hopefully we're still alive, you know, in 2020. We would also like to give a huge shout out to InstaX Fujifilm for hooking us up with these incredible products. This product right here, the InstaX Mini Link, you can actually use your smartphone and take your pictures, print them out on film, and give that whole nostalgic film looking vibe. It's killer, y'all. Get yourselves one right now, because if you don't, <laughs> then you're missing out. And now for our beautiful guest, please, everyone, put your hands together for the one, the only, everyone knows her as Money Josso. Hello. Hello. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for having me. No problem. Thank you for being here. It's the first time we're ever meeting. I know, right? It's the first. Who are you? Sorry, I don't know. My managers just told me to come here and like, I don't know. Your managers <laughs> told you to come here? Yeah. And bitch, what is the fucking show called? <laughs> Chai something. Chai something. <laughs> Since it's your first time on our show, actually, this is your second time on the show, yeah. so you're a golden member, and we would like to give you an exclusive gift from our team. Wow. This is so cute. You haven't been on the show for like three years. Money was one of our first guests on the show, which is so cringe to watch. Please don't watch that episode. Uh, I might just delete it from YouTube. I think you should. I think I should. <coughs> um, but just to see growth, we're going to have a little clip right here. We went to LA together earlier this year for my birthday. Mm -hmm. Exclusive footage right here <laughs> that I've never put out. Yeah, we did a couple of photo shoots there. Yeah. yeah. I feel like we've done like a few shoots. Yeah, we've done a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's the story, story of K Ray and MPJ. Yes, so I just wanted to shout out the fact that we've really grown a lot together and it's incredible to see how far you've come. But because I don't want you to watch that episode, can you give a quick recap of like how you started and where you are today? <laughs> 30 seconds, go. I feel like I, I do this all the time, so I feel like I'm like a broken tape record when it comes to this. Basically, went to Ryerson for fashion design, graduated. Started up my own thing because I wasn't finding a job in the fashion industry. Things kind of grew exponentially due to like word of mouth, social media, blah, blah, blah. Opened up a store 2016, opened up a store in Yorkville 2018, and now we're opening up a flagship 2020 in Woodbridge. Hey! Yeah. That is like the fastest way of like that. I think it's like 15 seconds that you have. That yes, score. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, so uh, one thing that was really cringe from the last episode is that update Drake has not slept with any of us. And I don't think that's happening considering where you're at right now. Yeah. Um, considering where I'm at. I, and I just. Uh, I think I'm over him. I'm totally over him. Yeah, he's just done some stuff yeah then, we won't okay. go into it R yeah I but uh in we, case he's watching and in case still you're watching down. yeah yeah <laughs> But um, just to let you know, we're over you, Drake, and uh, it's cool. Whatever, you've... You missed out. You missed out. Yeah. You definitely missed out, bitch. <laughs> Somebody put a ring on it. 
fun fact, we used to shoot some of our episodes at the old showroom in Brampton. Mm -hmm. Also, you've been able to take your brand to a whole new level worldwide. You've had countless fashion shows, you've had countless collections, moved your showroom to Yorkville. How do you think your brand has transitioned over the past few years? I feel like I look at that video that we did, like the Jada Cup, and like the collections we were featuring then, yeah. and the collections that I'm doing now, and I'm like, I've grown so much as a designer, like the quality of clothing. I think so like with much. every collection, I'm learning who I am as a designer. I mm. still don't think I'm there yet. I kind of have an idea, but I think I was very experimental then. Mm -hmm. But now I kind of know like which direction I'm going in. I feel like the brand is more refined now. Mm -hmm. When I'm putting out collections, I do keep the client in mind, but also like staying true to myself as well, like kind of not compromising in that sense. I do enjoy like the fact that you're always pushing boundaries when it comes to like the cuts you make mm -hmm. and like honestly like we've been able to do so many cool photo shoots crazy to see how many people like we pushed their buttons but also like showed people a different way of wearing mm -hmm. like south asian wear you know what yeah. i mean like even yeah. the lingas you wear like most of the stuff that you've done people are now doing again and it's like yeah. yo it's been done five years ago yeah, you know what yeah, i mean yeah, exactly so i think what, that's why i like your stuff so much yeah and, like, i remember when we did like a photo shoot i think we wanted to incorporate like western clothing into indian clothing and now like you see that trend everywhere like everywhere. where people are wearing the nuts with the ripped jeans yeah. and it's just like We've done it and we it's did just it like, like literally five, six years ago. <laughs> yeah, and like now it's just like, okay, on to the next thing. A ghost is here. Yes. So your latest collection you did was the Scorpius collection. Hey. Yeah. What was that inspiration behind that collection? The inspiration was my sign, which I'm a Scorpio. So I wanted to kind of curate a a very small capsule collection that catered more towards brides. Mm -hmm. And I sort of decided for this collection to be the model mm -hmm. in it, which is yeah. definitely stepping out of my bubble because I like to be behind the scenes. That's just where I think I thrive. So I was just like sort of trying something new. Um, and I thought it would be nice to showcase a real bride in that sort of setting so that way like my followers and like the audience can kind of relate to that more mm. um, and I felt like for me it was a lot of fun because it was this like very over-the-top bridal trial right. where like I got to like figure out what hairstyles <laughs> I like what makeup I like oh what colors God. I liked what jewelry I like that's actually so good what decor I like like right. I think it was just like very over the top and now <laughs> I think I have a clearer vision of what I want to actually wear on the day of my wedding speaking of yeah Girl, there's a huge ass ring on your finger. Oh my God. Even mm. when it comes to like that last episode that we did together, like yeah. where I was in that relationship then versus yeah. where I am now with Hark, it's so different. Can we just talk about that? Like, yeah. how did he propose? Oh God. Hark <laughs> and I have been friends since grade 11. We met in physics class. I what? I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh my God, um, it was the too. first day of physics. The new semester had just started. Um, there wasn't a seat in the class. I was like super late that day. Um, so I see this like guy sitting there, Hark, and I like sat beside him. I was super hungry that day. So my stomach was just making like all sorts of noises. I'm like, <laughs> oh God, I hope this guy doesn't like notice. <laughs> like what is happening inside of me but and I could see him like literally like slowly like do one of these like get away from me because like my <laughs> stomach was making such like profound noises <laughs> yeah and then the next day he didn't sit beside me he like sat on the other side of the wow. room yeah I think we slowly became friends after that and then we were friends throughout university and it was only until like I had graduated university we started spending like a lot of time together this is so weird <laughs> um, I actually don't know this. I only yeah, like I don't we used know to like hang out a lot. Like, yeah. can you stop? <laughs> oh my god, I hate telling this. No, I just keep going. Yeah, I guess like friendship just turned into something else. Like how though? I'm not telling you how. I want to know. I don't know. It's just it's like my mom cute. And okay. <laughs> We just like started having feelings for each other. Aww. We went to like Badlands one day, and like he was like holding my hand, and there was like a spark, and it was weird. It was like cool. <laughs> and then, how did he propose? How did it get to now marriage? So we've been together for how long? Four years. 
yeah, four years. Four years. Yeah. yeah, we went to Tulum together. He, I thought he was proposing to me, but he was just like, there wasn't a ring. So I believed him and I was just like, okay, there's no proposal. So the last day that we were at our hotel, they wanted to do something special for us. And I, my ego got to me and I was just like, oh, it's cause I'm like MKJ <laughs> and like, they want the followers, they want the tags, they, they want, want the, the mentions. So we went up the stairs. I saw the roses. The roses gave it all away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was a photographer too, but the <laughs> photographer never hit me yeah. because I was just like, no, 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 this is for the gram. It's right. for the gram, right? right? But then like it got so weird because he got so nervous. Right. And it felt like a first date and like the first time we met or something because I got so nervous and like it was so weird. <laughs> like I was just like, I've never felt that way before. Right. And I was just like, this is hard. I've known him for how long, but yeah. why do I? I feel so nervous around him yeah and then like he just asked me to dance we danced to like to me I'm so into you and then he like got down on his knee and he proposed listen ladies we know it's been hard finding some decent respectful sophisticated good intended men out there and we know you've been trying especially with that co-worker who keeps sending mixed signals and you just found out he's engaged we know just the place to find your guy. Try Delmo. With over 10 million matches made, it's the leading South Asian dating app. Download the app now to find your one in a dill million. What is the biggest misconception about being a designer? That it's super glamorous. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's quite the opposite. Um, I mean, like most of the time I spend wearing sweatpants, not washing my hair, not even <laughs> taking a shower, <laughs> just literally start sewing or go downstairs, get on my laptop, being covered in threads. It's just yeah. a lot. A lot of needles around too. Needles, yeah. blood, sweat, tears. Do you remember tears. when you poked me with a needle like three times in a row? I did it on purpose? No, but you did it and this, it hurt and I still am scarred why? by it. When was this? This was like 2016. Oh, like that's normal for me. Like, but I feel like you've done it uh, count countless <coughs> times. <laughs> it hurt. Mm. I just wanted to acknowledge that. Anyways, ah, you stabbed me. I'm so sorry. Holy shit, that went really deep. It went like in naka. So you basically got stabbed. I got stabbed in the back. Congratulations, how do you feel? Oh, oh my god! god. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 <laughs> I have no recollection of ever poking you with needles. Um, anyways, so we have something exciting coming up. I mean, I always talk about how hard you work and like, how I'm so inspired by your hustle and like I'm always motivated, you know, by everything that you do. And I just also as like an entrepreneur, like I always watch you and I'm like, I've seen you grow so much in the last like, what, six years we've mm -hmm. known each other. Yeah. And it's just incredible <coughs> to see how far you've come. I saw that a lot like with Bali and I, we both saw that rigorously through documenting mm -hmm. you earlier this year. Coming out with a new documentary soon, With Love yes. by Money Jessel. Yeah. The Money Jessel brand is rebellious. It's breaking all the rules, breaking boundaries. It was literally a love letter to women just loving themselves. What is the difference between Indian clothes and Canadian clothes? With my collection, I'm kind of blending those lines. I feel very powerful, I feel very Beautiful, bold, and I feel like I'm me. Girls, gather around. Stop. Photo shoots in like maybe three days, so a lot of shit to do. This is the third bodice that we made. I'm really hoping I like it this time because if we don't like it, we're gonna have to redo everything. Well, their call time was 4:30, so they're 22 minutes late. I feel like I'm missing two more bodies. The girls here yet or no? One minute to showtime! That, I have to say, I'm not gonna lie, I don't say this a lot about my work, but I'm pretty proud of that documentary. No, it looks pretty freaking cinematic. Like, yeah. It's so good. It's, I, it's pretty good, y'all. Um, yeah. So, uh, coming soon, make sure you go and watch it. Yeah, do you want to talk about the documentary a little bit and what that was like for you and what 
people can look forward to? Yeah, so I feel like, again, like we were just talking about, like there's so many misconceptions about being in the fashion industry. A lot of people think it's overnight. Mm. Like I feel like a lot of people sometimes think that my success just happened overnight or like I just got all of these Instagram followers, mm -hmm. but it was just like a lot of hard work that mm -hmm. went into it. I wanted you and Bali to film that entire process. So mm -hmm. when we made With Love, I got you guys to document the entire making of a collection. Mm -hmm. um, from, from like the sketch to runway. Yeah, from sketch to cutting to sewing to runway to mm -hmm. castings to mm -hmm. all of that process. And I thought it was cool to show that because a lot of people don't realize that a lot of our pieces are made here in Canada, mm -hmm. also by fashion students or fashion graduates. Mm -hmm. Cause that's really important as well for me to be able to support the industry that I'm in. Mm -hmm. um, because that was like my issue. When I had graduated from Ryerson, the reason why I started up my own brand is because I wasn't finding a job. Right. So I think it was just important to show that as well mm -hmm. that there are job opportunities that exist in Canada, in Toronto. You don't have to move to New York or move to London mm -hmm. to do an internship and not get paid for it. Mm. You can get like a paid job. So mm -hmm. I think that was something I wanted to mm -hmm. show. And just to show everybody all of the hard work that goes into creating a collection. Can't wait for everyone to see it because it's not just, I think, showing the fashion world, but it's like also seeing like a young woman of color, entrepreneur, who builds her own empire and like that seeing that is like so inspiring mm -hmm. and it's very relatable as well we see your parents talking yeah. about the yeah my whole parents journey. make a little like appearance yeah and, stuff. and, and I, I feel like so watching them like yeah. talk about it like made me so emotional yeah. like just watching their scenes even though like I was there but yeah. like watching it on screen like the way you guys shot it yeah the way you guys put music over it it just like <laughs> made it very emotional I yeah. Think. yeah I definitely recommend everyone to watch it it's something that we worked really really hard on and I think um, people just need to see the inside scoop of what it's like to mm -hmm. be an artist in, in this day and age. Yeah and, and I hope it, it inspires other young females that yeah. also want to pursue something that's not just a lawyer engineer like yeah. it is possible it's a lot of hard work mm -hmm. but I feel like if you put your heart to it like you can do it. Yeah. yeah with love coming soon. Why do you think the fashion industry in Tro Toronto is having trouble thriving Considering we have so many talented designers mm -hmm. and like we have our own style and aesthetic as well. I think one of the biggest problems is um, funding. Mm. There is like next to none almost funding. There are some outlets that do provide funding, but you have to really like, it's almost like a full-time job applying for those grants. Exactly. Um, so they don't make it easy for you. Just have to cut this off for yeah. a second. This is why Anarkly hasn't come in. <laughs> Just because I, I know every time I release an episode of Child of the Cup, they're like, we're in our yeah. So I just want to say, the reason why Anarchly hasn't come is because of funding. It's really hard for yeah, artists it's, it's in general around the spectrum. I feel like I kind of lucked out in the sense where I found a market, like a niche market that wanted to purchase my clothing. But there's a lot of designers struggling out there creating beautiful pieces, but there's no market for them mm. or there's no funding. Like they don't because like. Being a fashion designer, it's an investment. Like you're mm -hmm. investing into fabrics, you're investing into machinery, you're investing into employees. Mm. So like the thing is when you're creating a collection, you're spending thousands and thousands of dollars and then you put it out there in the world and you're like, okay, crossing fingers, I hope this sells. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So it's not like, I feel like sometimes I see like my jewelry friend designers and I'm like, you guys have it so easy. Like you literally just like make this necklace, you carry it around and you could showcase it even me like lugging around my lengas everywhere yeah, like it's yeah. so much work doing mm. pop-ups it's so much work um so i really wish that there was better funding um i feel like canada is super good when it comes to music mm. there's a lot of like requirements for example on the radio like mm -hmm. i think a canadian song has to play every i, I don't every know other song yeah, every other song or yeah. something yeah. like that and i feel like that should be something that should be implemented into stores mm -hmm. I feel like every store should have an X amount of Canadian designers, designers in it, right. something like that. I think personally, the clothing industry can definitely help the economy, mm. but I don't think uh, Canada recognizes that. Mm. Um, like New York City recognizes it, mm. Paris recognizes it, mm. London does, mm -hmm. but I don't think Canada's there yet. Mm. Yeah. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah. Because I think like what's cool about the music industry is that we have seen so much music mm -hmm. come out of Toronto. Yeah. But 
Um, and even like, honestly, like there's so many dope directors, actors, mm -hmm. but even in just like the industry I'm in, it's so difficult to find. Yeah. We both say this all the yeah. time, we chose the wrong industry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it's like, it's a lot more difficult, but I think it's also just like, we know that the work that we do is important. Mm -hmm. So we, we do have a little bit of like, I guess not privilege, but like a little bit of like, wait, like leg room because mm -hmm. we do, we have built an audience for ourselves. Yeah, exactly. And we've been able to like do this, but yeah. a lot of people don't, have that and yeah. I think that that's un unfortunate too because there's yeah. no funding that, that's yeah. like the biggest that's just like problem. one of the problems yeah. so I'm not there's gonna so go many into things. all of the other yeah, ones yeah, 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 but yeah. yeah but I feel like you really carved your space yeah. like I have to congratulate you I know this is mad professional but yeah. <laughs> I want to congratulate you because honestly for you to carve your space in yeah. such a white dominated industry mm -hmm. especially in Canada like yeah. to be like nah I'm, I'm important like yeah. you know, I have I've made I've been making waves here, and yeah. we've been like changing the way. Well, people that was see an it. issue when I had first started in Canada as well. Yeah. They were like, "You're closer to ethnic." Yeah. Or like I was entering into this like competition where to get money mm -hmm. funding, mm -hmm. and they're like, "Oh, but your clothes don't target a Canadian market." I'm like, "What does I, Canadian look like?" Yeah. What does Canadian look like? Yeah. And it was just like one of those things that I had to really struggle with and mm. I felt like I had a lot of trouble in the beginning defining who I was as a designer because mm. I didn't want to be pigeonholed right but now I kind of just accept it like it is what it is yeah you have everyone like all these freaking celebrities wearing yeah. your stuff like it's not just like your stuff is only catered to South Asians that's it yeah and only bridal wear or whatnot you yeah. have way more to offer and I yeah. think it's because you have such well a I want like people to be able to wear my pieces yeah day to day and exactly. mix and match it like you don't have to necessarily just wear it to an Indian reception or something yeah. like that like Tulum especially was something I specifically kept destination wedding in mind mm. but also like chilling on like poolside in Miami. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There were a lot of pieces like that that you could like interchange into wearing with a lenga or wearing it with a bikini. Right. Last question, what's the best advice you've ever received? I feel like I've given it to myself, mm. which is um, just always going, writing down lists, mm. planning life out, giving it your all. Thank you. And what would you say to your younger self? Don't let the bullies bother you. Oh. Yeah. Money. That's another podcast. That is. Yeah, yeah. 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 What, you want to talk about that for a second? You have six minutes. <laughs> um, no. Okay. How can people find you and stalk you? They can follow me on Instagram at moneykjussel. And you can shop the pieces online at www.moneyjussel.com. All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like this video, man. <laughs> I feel like my lips are ripping apart. <laughs> Is my lipstick okay? Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. If you like this video, please go and subscribe and like the video and comment subscribe because that's how we're gonna get the views, right? That's how we're gonna get the people to watch more. So what am I fucking? <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> hey, if you like this video, go and like it. Hey, you like the video? Then go and go. <laughs> Comment, like, subscribe. Internet, bye.